Hey there, and welcome to my early game guide for Vagrus the Riven Realms. I'm Icon, and this video will guide you through all you need to know to stay financially afloat, to found a stable comitatus, and keep those beasts that want to eat your, eat your beasts away from your caravan. So we're going to go over all the necessary things that you need to get a stable foothold into the game. That's basically it. So we're starting out with a character creation here. Among the races, there's nothing too special to take. And there's one thing that I want to say up front. This is only one way to do it. It's by no means the only way to do it. There's uh, only the fact that I felt this route is very reproducible and teaches you a couple of things which will be useful throughout all the game. So, race-wise, pick whatever you want. There's only the Dutch Mahan race that's somehow playing towards the way I like to play the early game. It's because they give you one rank of the survival perk. We're going to take that for now because I want to. And with the backgrounds, I'm going to stick here for myself with the ranger because the ranger gives us a lot of skills that increase hunting chances and foraging chances, which are really, really cool things to have more of that more about that later. So with the calling, I'm sticking with the trader calling because this is the most beginner compatible background. The mercenary and explorer background are usable too, but I'm orienting this tutorial more towards beginners of this game. So let's take that. The ambition is absolutely your choice because it's just your win condition doesn't change your beginning stats. So pick whatever you want over here with the perks. I'd strongly recommend you to pick everything which increases your hunting chances. That's beast lore, group lore, hunting, and as far as I remember, well, no, that's the, uh, ah, survival down here. So I knew there was another one. And survival. These are the skills where you can't have too many points in because it will lower the food costs of your caravan, and that's a good thing. So another thing that I really like to skill early on is stuff that gives me healing-based chance because healing is really, really important. It's a pain when your people are wounded, and it's even more a pain when you're losing lots of people after a fight. Healing kind of like uh, mitigates that. So these points are really useful too. There are, of course, no useless profession points, but uh, these are, in my opinion, among the most useful ones in the early game. I personally love to pick something that uh, increases your settle chance, because, you know, bad things do happen, and this skill increases your chances of uh, lowering the the fallout of, of, of dissatisfied people in your comitatus, moral breakdowns, food shortages, and all these things. So everything consider uh, to going towards a peace settle chance is also really useful, especially dur during the early game when you are a little bit wobbly in terms of stability. All right. So that's been said and done. Let's go for another point of herb lore here and stay with that. Everything else is, of course, up to you. There are no useless things to skill in this game. I only found that these uh, stats were really, really useful for me during the early game. So the next thing that happens, we get the little talk with the old man. In case you didn't know already, you should really listen to his advice because you get a free recommendation to a merchant, which gives you free companions. And companions are good for you in so many ways. All right, we're traveling over to Kernak Way Station first, which is going to be our first outpost. You always arrive here, and the story here gives you a chance to pick up a couple of uh, passengers. These passengers always come from a different faction, it's either the trading houses, the criminals, the churches, or the Dragonland traders. Pick whoever you want to have a good relationship early on with. You will have to need you'll need two empty cargo slots though to complete the the quest. Really important to note, because at the beginning you have exactly two open inventory slots, so there's not really more to pick. The other option, if you don't want to go for that quest, would be to skip out on the passengers and load your inventory with wine. Because as the rumor here tells you, you can sell wine really good up there in the north. 
We're going to go with the passenger route because I like the reputation points in case you didn't uh, check them out yet. So there's uh, here the trade houses, the dragon land traders, and these two are the criminals and these are the churches. So far so good. We're going to head over now to Torzak's shelter. The uh, traders of that dragon lands house are with us. So up here we see now our way leads us up to Torzak's shelter, which is a really, really low amount of travel. We're here and that's there. So first thing that I want to do at Kurnak way station is I want to pick up some extra personnel. So the amount of scouts you begin with is way too low to sustain your caravan with scouts workers and slaves ensure the survival of your comitatus because they can gather supplies every day and that's what we're going to do also when this icon here pops up always pick up enough fighters until it uh, disappears because it is really really good to have enough fighters sadly i can't get enough fighters right now but we'll change that at kernak way station okay with that being said and done we're going to get over to the next town so we can't travel here today because we're too tired let's rest up and we're going to go towards uh towards X shelter now so when you're traveling most of the time you want to avoid the road under these circumstances right now i'm going to stick to the road because I don't want to um, forage or hunt too much. On the road, hunting is absolutely not uh, possible, you know? Hunting on the road makes sense somehow. You could only forage. Foraging will is always the, going to be the weaker source of food. Hunting is the biggest source of food, but since I don't have enough personnel right now to stay afloat here on my own, I'm rather rushing towards Torzak's shelter before I'm going to try to uh, do anything crazy. So we're being attacked by uh, by wave by enemies here. If ever anything happens in this game, I know it's a little bit cheesy, but I want to make you uh, get your attention on that. There's a daily autosave, and since I don't want to. Mangle around right now with a night ambush at the beginning of the game. I just reload the last autosave. Whenever Bakras flings something at you, which is way too big to handle, you're allowed to just load. It's no shame. There, This game has a crazy cruel RNG when it comes down to events that it tosses at you. And quite often you are encountering things that not even running away is an option. I mean, this event was possibly not that dangerous, but... I wanted to take it as a good moment to tell you how how cool it is that you can save scum in this game. It's still hard enough with it, with it, believe me. So at Torzak's shelter, we can now get over there and deliver our people here. They give you a quite nice amount of money, but more importantly, they also give you some supplies which you can work with. At Torzak's shelter, you just enter the town and pay the gate tax. And now you are you have access to a real marketplace so the first thing we do is sell off the luxury wine i'll just hold down left shift while i click uh, while i click sell to sell away the whole stack at once so here we go now with that starting money you're pretty uh, you're, you're pretty in a pretty crappy starting situation so what we're trying to do first now is we're going to hire as many scouts as we can Yes, nine scouts does sound a little bit much, but it ain't, believe me. So we're going to stack up on fighters again. And now we are at a point where we can somewhat make sure that we got enough food. So the other thing where you can stock up is slaves and workers. Workers and slaves do basically the same job. The difference is that workers get a salary and slaves don't. In basic. But slaves also can grow disobedient and that can be all the source of all manner of different problems. Whereas workers, they can't grow disobedient as long as you pay them. So it's either up to you to go for the more risky way of uh, salary-free working personnel and a higher, a higher cost of... Uh, of introduction because you know workers they only need one changer to hire them 
slaves cost the 75 times uh, the amount but after 75 days you um, you get the idea so what we're going to do here first is i'm going to buy myself another beast of burden right away yes this eats up most of my money but it is so much worth it to have the extra the extra carrying capacity here so we're doing this because of these quests here the first thing we're trying to do here is to find quests that several quests that head towards the same place here Arkan, for example click that Arkan is not too far away from Torzak's shelter perfect so I see House Okwo needs somebody House Venari needs somebody and we check out the whole list yeah well there's uh, even another <clears throat> supply run for the Church of Sergorod so we could take three supply runs in one go for, uh, towards Ar uh, Arkan. Ignore basically all the other quests at the beginning, these escorts and such, they are rarely worth the pain. Supply runs are the easiest way to increase your money and your faction standing. So we have six slots open, so we're going to pick up these supply runs. But another thing that I really like to do before I go into quests like these, uh, this is just a quest you can safely accept, it's also leading you towards Arkan, but th this always happens. So I'm, I love to rest before I take the quests, because now we have a full movement point roster. Yes, I need to pay the gate tax one more time. Yes, but compared to uh, the uh, delay we got there, it's a, it's something you can live through. So let's get back to that. So escort for, wait a sec. Oh, we had a reroll there. Oh, that's unlucky. That doesn't happen too often, but when it does happen, well, okay. It's not too bad. Two quests in one go are, at the beginning, a raid that's totally okay for you. You should never, tr well, try to avoid to run with only one quest per tour, because uh, it's really low... Um, it's a really low yield and yeah we're going to also stock up on our supplies here a little bit that was a little bit unfortunate in that scenario but that really doesn't happen too often that you miss out a quest because you rested up but it can happen I'm pretty happy that it did happen actually so for the sake of the or about the rest of the uh, inventory spots here we don't know what we can sell here, because in the journal we have no informations about Arkan yet. So there's not really anything we can trade for now. I know what I can trade there, but it would be cheating to do that. But in case you really want to know, mushroom beer sells in most of the towns there pretty decently. But we're not going to go for that, because I don't want to uh, to have a uh, too spoiler heavy in, uh, experience here. So... Another thing that's really, really worth it at the beginning to buy in the equipment store is the awnings here, because it decreases the consumption of your personnel. And check out what happens when we install that. We gain, uh, well, it's not visible, but our supplies last substantially longer. So before you leave Torzak's shelter, there's another thing. Always check out Braxius' store. He's uh, giving you access to one um person per se the what the first uh, companion is uh random in this scenario it's uh krifta and we definitely pick her up and he's also asking you always if you want to have other uh, people here express your interest at the dwarf is a pretty cool thing because i love to have garrick early on garrick can be uh, found in the bathhouse once you ask him there Tell them you are looking for somebody and then you get the garrick story i don't want to have uh, i don't want to go too deep to that we just can't hire him here and garrick is a companion which allows you to oh wait a sec is that right yeah which allows you to put him into the slot of the of, uh, of the super cargo uh, deputy so this is pretty good for your um for your comitatus in general but i think we we need to camp to do that right 
yeah. So supercargo is one uh, slot that I really love to use because you get a lot of uh, bonuses for the early game and Garrick is basically always available for you. He's the dwarf that's always there for you. Okay, so let's start our little journey. So we have provisions for five days and we can see that Arkham is over here. So I already did one mistake there. I didn't save before taking up the quests, but after taking up the quests, do yourself always a favor and save the game because you never know what happens on the road and it's really annoying if you have to go back all these autosaves. So we're going to travel now towards Arkan, and I'm going to leave the road as quick as possible. I want to travel towards Arkan as good as I can far away from the road. Not only does this save you time, it only saves you a lot of provisions. So... Oh yeah, I totally forgot that I made a mistake there. <laughs> when you do your camps, I, I don't know why that game does it uh, does have you automatically default on a pay later schedule. By all means, I always pay my comitatus directly. If you put on the lock, it also remembers that one. And you don't have to tell the game every day that you actually want to pay your dues daily. Okay, so when we're diving into the Badlands, there's two things that can happen. So you either move for seven to eight movement points. This is the way, this is the way where you have to hunt and pay vigor for it. Let's do this. So we camp here and now we activate these people here to hunt and forage for us. We'll have to pay this in vigor, but that's okay. You can do this every second or third day. And we don't have enough guards. Dang, okay. I missed, I missed it that, but it's not that much of a problem. Okay, we're going to go for that. We lost one point of vigor, but it's really not that much of a problem. The next day, we're going to try to find a way which yields us 6 MP. That's perfect. So now we're camping and now you can see the hunting always costs two movement points. So I like to swap between days where I move six movement points and put no drain on the vigor. And every now and then it's good to just uh, don't care about that one point of vigor because as long as your people are fully fed and well guarded, they regain vigor. It's no problem. So we're going to end our day here. So sadly our... Our rolls are a tad bit unlucky right now, and that's also another reason why it's really worth saving the game. Sometimes RNGs is just doesn't love you. And yeah, here we go. We, you see, we're, we are getting some supplies every day, but we were extremely unlucky so far, I can tell you. So let's see. Yeah, here we go. That was a normal uh, result. So we gained around 90 supplies and even goods which we can sell. This is, uh, this is like the best case scenario. So we're going to ride over towards Arken and do a little bit of a uh, hunting trip here still. Always keep an eye on these percentages because if they are too far here in the reds, you can't really uh, expect any successes. So we have found enough food to get us through there and Arken does welcome us. So over here, we deliver those quests and big profits so far. Now we also sell the hides and the uh, and the bones that we. Oh no, it's even ivory. It's even worth more. Sooner than find here. There. So we got a nice amount of money at that point. Now, after you've uh, you've hit the next town, first off, I need that extra fighter because that was really annoying me. I don't know, that must have slipped my attention. And now we're going to pick up even more scouts. So I personally think something between t 12 and uh, 10 and t 15 scouts are pretty good for your uh, comitatus. It is always depending on how large your squad is and how good your skills are. You have to find a uh, own weight for that, but don't go without uh, with less than 10 scouts. It really doesn't play out well. Also, never feel shy to buy a couple of fighters extra. They will be really, really useful when you're being attacked anyways. Okay, so I'm also going to pick up a couple of extra workers because the discrepancy between, between available workforce and 
necessary workforce should never be too slim because you never know you can get attacked and a couple of workers die you roll a bad event and a couple of workers die you roll another bad event and the moral breaks down and your workers don't like to work anymore and your workforce breaks there's nothing worse on the road than being low on workforce it's even worse than a low moral because it drains you dry in a couple of days it's uh it's like uh, trying to move a cart with only three wheels it's really that bad okay but with all that out of the way we can now check out the uh, way back so as we see here i want to go for another caravan towards torzak's shelter perfect i see even two delivery quests there i like that and well there would be another escort quest if you really want to go for escort quests believe me when i say you will lose more money than you gain sadly because unless you are in an incredible advantage towards your enemies you will always lose a couple of uh, people during that fight early on well okay so with that out of the way we got all that stuff here on the card we're now well i'm going to build buy up a stack of supplies again left shift and left click does the trick to get this one up and well four days of supplies are for my opinion more than enough if you want to stay safe you can buy more but there's one thing every town that sells supplies for two changers a piece is basically robbing you you the one changer per supply is the only preferable price for supplies everything else is really costing and will drain your your profits of your trip pretty hard so with the other uh, things here i really love the protected harnesses because they increase your uh, they decrease your consumption of the beasts of burden basically everything which decreases your resource consumption is awesome and I want to lose a couple of words now about about trading too because when we check this out now we know the prices between Arkan and Torzak's shelter but it's still really hard to find a, a proper a proper deal between these things there's an easier way though to find that so what I love to do is first listen to uh, rumors they sometimes tell you good deals but if you scroll through the inventory of a town you will always find certain goods that have a very high stockpile for example here marble is the largest stockpile available this is usually the product the uh, outposts produce themselves this is usually the stuff you can make money with so instead of checking all these products i'm just checking now marble so looking for marble on that list marble 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 and you see here i'm buying marble at arkan for five and five and i'm selling that for eight at torzak's shelter that's profit don't waste your time checking all the prices between two towns always look for the goods that are really really available there and also when you're at a spot you can also use classic paper and just write up that obsidian and pottery are permanently in demand at Arkin. Pottery, by the way, you can buy pretty cheap in Torzak's shelter. But we're going to pack up now extra slots or, or slots extra with marble. Never ever spend your last couple of bros before you leave town because you will need to pay salaries and people really get grumpy when you can't. So here we go, yet another, yet another time for a save game because you know it, it's really good it, it's really really good to do so and now we're going to travel over here and here i'll do another time hunting even though it's draining me bigger and now that we got the necessary amount of guards by all means only travel with this enabled it's really the best best choice because you increase slaves obedience and moral and a lower chance of ambushes too a free regain of moral per day is so valuable can't uh, can't overrate it so we're now trying to walk every second day in a way that we have two mp left so my personal favorite pace is to strain them out one day and let them rest the other day and this is for example 200 uh, supplies all these goods check out the resource uh, situation here two days now four days later 
it's amazing. With the necessary amount of scouts, you can almost travel without any supplies whatsoever. It's up to you, of course. It is an R it is an RNG game, and it can cost you dearly. So, as we see here, we gain some herbs, and the pricing of these items. If you have, uh, if you don't know what to uh, drop out, you can always uh, check out the uh, price history tab here. Just a little tip on the side, but the game sorts this out pretty intelligently already. The uh, leather is in fact the best material to toss away one last thing though you always should check out a really important stat there and that's in your journal your tasks is it here your distribution quests have a certain time limit when you do this uh, kind of sustainable trip Try to avoid taking too long because you don't travel too fast. Sometimes it's really worth checking out if you are still, if you still have some time left. But uh, well, most of the time it ain't necessary to to be too careful about that. All right, here we're going to uh, ignore this uh, event here. Just know that in the middle here you have access to an event. I don't want to play that out. Right, it's about orcs. That's all I need to say. And now let's get back to Torzak's shelter. And like I said before, if the time allows, let's see, our time does allow, all right. I rest up before I enter Torzak's shelter. So I have full movement points and full su supply stockpiles before I go for the next trip. So let's get back into town, get the uh, quests uh, away and sell the marble we brought ourselves huge profit here even some foraged goods are available so let's sell away those herbs and the ivory and as you see here we made huge profits every tour we took was a complete success so far so from here on you can reproduce this tactic you should never take a trip without at least two supply runs in your pocket at this point, I would even try to go ball uh, to go ballsy and recruit another beast of burden so I can increase my volume yet again. And from there on, well, it's the same strategy. You go for the supply runs. For example, here Lumen lo looks like a good spot, or Arkin again. Well, if you if you would go for Arkin again, well, Lumen has three uh, requests. If we would go for uh, Arkin again, we could now. Do the trade with the pottery because now we know that this place needs pottery and as it uh, as i happen to know torzak's shelter produces pottery and your trip to lumen would be the other way around you have you would have no information about that place so for the first trip try to stuff your inventory with, with as many supply runs as possible so you don't really have any room left for any uh trade stuff and if you know the place, you can also bounce back and forth with trade goods and you can do these runs even with less quests. Because as soon as you know what kind of goods you can trade between two uh, places, the runs grow more and more profitable. One thing about, one word of a warning though, you can oversaturate markets. If we would now, now only uh, go back and forth between Arkin and Torzak's shelter, the prices for marble and pottery would eventually stagnate and we would even make losses with that. So try to pedal around these places and balance out your trades. It's never good to go for a monoculture. And beyond that, the world is friggin' huge. Go exploring, go, uh, go onwards. As soon as you have the ability to make more money every trip every trip than you've spent you're basically free to play the game you want uh, the way you want and i hope that was somewhat helpful for me i was extremely struggling at first and this strategy really saved my bum and big thanks towards all the people who commented my videos i posted before because a couple of these uh strategies aren't really mine and i want to say thanks to everybody who shared their strategies which have been then enhanced with my ideas and that made this guide so drop your comments down below if you have any questions or something you want to add there as well because you know like i said by no means the only way to do it 
and of course leave a thumbs up on that video if you enjoyed to make it more visible to other people and last but not least check out my channel where i do daily content you just need to subscribe and turn on the notification bell to stay informed and if you are really interested in everything you can also check out the text box down there where you will find my twitch channel where i do daily streams and also my discord server where you can find a like-minded gaming community whatever you might do or don't I hope you enjoyed the video and see you soon. Bye-bye.